Hi guys, it's ASBYT and today we have a very special video because right here on the table we have the holy grail, according to some people, of the Android TV world. Not only is it by far one of the best products you can buy for streaming, but also for gaming as well. So let's get straight to it. Right, so on the table in front of me here, we have, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe we have the, I don't want to damage it, settle down stabbing it, the NVIDIA Shield. Now, it's a product that I've talked quite a lot about on numerous different videos, and it just dawned on me the other day that I've never actually done an unboxing and full review on it. So what did I do? Amazon Prime Day came around, it was reduced in price, so I thought I'd have a little dabble. You know, it is common knowledge that it is probably the best device you can buy currently for streaming and also gaming as well. But I thought I'd put it through my own personal paces, starting with this unboxing. So without further ado, let's get this bad boy unboxed. That's probably the worst line you could possibly make. Let's see if I can do it anyway. I can. Oh, -ho -ho, it's upside down. I'm going to get rid of that. Playing the NBA with that sort of stuff. Did you see that? Swish. A three wins the series. It's Lillard. He got the shot off. Lillard down. Down. And the Blazers win the series for the first time. And then we're going to, of course, there it is. Get rid of the box. Now, as you can see, the one that I purchased was the one with just the TV remote. You can also buy one with a gamepad as well. I'm not personally going to be doing much gaming on it, so that's why I went with this cheaper option. And this is, of course, the 2018 latest product available from NVIDIA, but it's been around for a little while already. 4K, HDR, Android TV, NVIDIA Shield on the front, and obviously that's what it's going to look like. These are the different accessories you can get. So the Shield stand, the Shield controller, which I just mentioned, and then we go to the other side, and we've got what's inside, shield, shield remote, and power adapter as well. And then specifications, we may as well get them out of the way, and this is one of the main reasons that generally sets this product apart from many other Android TV boxes. We've got the NVIDIA Tigra X1 processor, which is phenomenal for streaming and gaming, etc. 256 core NVIDIA graphics, 64-bit CPU, 3 gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, and USB expansion. Now, of course, we'll get to ports, etc. in a second, but straight away, 16 gigabytes for me, I would personally like to see more. It's not that it's small because many devices that it's competing with have the same or less. There's not many that have more, but when you pay this sort of money, I would like to see more onboard storage from the start that you don't have to expand. Android TV with Google Car. So outside of smart TVs, this is the main device that runs Android TV. It has just had an update to Android Oreo 8 as well. 4K HDR, 1080p or 720. HDMI 2.0 with HDCP 2.2 and HDR. Dual band Wi-Fi, which again is a positive for streaming. USB 3 times 2 Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Atmos 7.1 and 5.1 pass-through, and HDMI CEC. So they are the main things that are on the box. Let's get it open. Oh, that sounded a bit like I broke it. So there you can see it on the table and a lot of you might not realize that it is now a very, very small device. As you can see, you know, it's the same sort of size as a Fire TV box, obviously at different dimensions, it's more rectangular than square, but it, it you know, it, it does compete in terms of portability now with a lot of other products, and that's because they updated it in 2017, but they didn't really change any of the specs because even the old Nvidia Shield still had better specs than pretty much every single product on the market. So what's different about this one from the older one? If the specs are exactly the same, well, as you can see, it's smaller, like I've already mentioned. And in terms of ports, we have our power port here, Ethernet, HDMI, and two USB ports. And that is it. Now, of course, the old version did have a micro SD card slot as well, which is a bit of a shame that they dropped that but you can use the USB ports for expandable storage anyway. There's also a pro model version. I talked about the 16 gigabytes of storage as a pro model version, but it will come at a bit of a premium in terms of price. And is that premium worth paying when you can, of course, expand this one? 
Probably not. In my opinion, you may choose to, and there are benefits of having the inbuilt storage. You've obviously got the vent underneath here as well to keep it cool. And obviously this lip does allow the air to transfer when it is lying flat. You can also obviously lean on a side like this and you can buy a stand for it to again maintain it like this. Right, let's put that to one side and let's see exactly what else is in the box. So like I mentioned, we have our remote, which is a lot slimmer than like the Fire TV remotes, for example, but it's a similar sort of feel in the hand. It does feel quite premium. Matte on one side, gloss on the other. And you've of course got your voice search, home, back, and your D-pad with your enter button there. And of course, you've got your microphone there as well. Anything else? Yes, we have our manual here, and we also have our power brick. And you also in this box, you get two different types of plugs, just in case you it doesn't know where you ship it. It must know where you're shipping it to because you've bought it from that Amazon. Silly NVIDIA. Good but silly. You should know I'm from the UK. Come on. That then slips in like that and you are good to rock and roll. That is everything in the box. Now I'm gonna plug it in and we're gonna show you the home layout. We're gonna show you what comes with it. I'm also gonna run a couple of benchmark tests on it as well and show some 4K footage from YouTube as an example. So it is just loading up now and as you can see, it's asking for a setup of a remote and then you put in your language straight away. I'm just gonna say processor in this feels amazing already. I know I'm only going through menus, but that combined with the three gigabytes of RAM, you can tell just works absolutely flawlessly. No lags, no glitches, etc. so far. Very early days. Now, while it's finishing loading up, I'm gonna be ultra critical about the remote. The right part of the D-pad doesn't feel like it just quite clicks as much as it should. Being massively ultra critical, I just know it's a top of the range product and I would expect it to be completely flawless, but it might just be one dodgy remote out of a hundred. Then it comes to this bit here and it asks you if you wanna download some sort of default apps, like it does on the Fire TV again, as an example. So we'll download Kodi, Spotify, TV player, and then we'll go to continue. And again, it gives you the information about what you do with the remote. And just to point this out in case you didn't know, the actual volume, it, it doesn't appear on the D-pad and it looks like, well, why doesn't it have a volume? Well, it's actually in the middle between these two bits here. So you can actually just swipe up and down. It's like a touch bar and it turns the volume up and down, which I think is quite a nice little touch. You may touch it every now and again. That's the only problem when you're not trying to. So yes, it's intuitive and it's a bit different, but it may become a little bit frustrating and annoying if you knock it every now and again over a long time of use. Now it is, as you can see, downloading an update already which is promising obviously this has probably been on the shelf for quite a while so we'll just skip that now because no one wants to wait for that let's go so as you can see the pff, don't know what that jump was we are very close to it finishing the update i was going to reboot and then we should have the update installed so it actually gives you a little walkthrough of the device so one of the main features is of course the voice activation you can search for things using your voice the same that you can do on pretty much most android tv os products and you've of course got chromecast built in all right so straight away this is the home layout you're going to see when you load it up you've got an nvidia game section here and it needs an update i'm not going to go into that because this video will take forever you've got youtube netflix you've also got prime video Video, BBC iPlayer, ITV, etc. You've also got a Netflix and a YouTube tab here, and you can customize your channels at the bottom here. So we're gonna jump onto YouTube and I'm gonna quickly show you a little video to see, it doesn't have sound because it's a monitor, but you'll see the actual footage and see how smooth it is in 4K. I'm gonna show you one of mine, which I film in 4K, so we'll know whether it works or not. So here we go, this was the last video that I did yesterday. And as you can see, it's running absolutely flawlessly in 4K. Now the monitor is only a 1080p monitor, so you're not getting the full actual footage quality, but it's still showing it can run 4K, no problem. Impressed? Yeah, it's doing a solid job so far. I'm also gonna jump into the app section, which is just up here. And then you've got a list of all the other apps that are on your system. So if we went into Kodi, you then just need to install it. And that would then download from the Android TV Play Store, which like I said, is a bit limited in terms of what you can download from it compared to the normal Google Play Store that you'd find on a smartphone, for example. But any APKs that you could possibly want, you can still download by downloading ES File Explorer, which you can get on this Play Store. So here we are on the menu, and as you can see, I've used some good devices for streaming. This is the best. In terms of lags, freezes, glitches on the interface, even my Fire TV box, which is still a very good device, is starting to show its age a little bit, and this does feel that little step up from that. I mean, it's a dream. It really is. It's one of those products that, if you can afford it, then I highly recommend getting it. And you can obviously customize all the things on your home layout. You can move apps where you want to give you your own sort of personal setup. So let's just try the voice search, see how that works. So I'll just press that button there. Open Netflix. 
and then Netflix open. So again, this is another very good function, nice and easy to use. So what I'm gonna do now is quickly download Antutu and Geekbench, run those tests and show you the actual results of those. So that is pretty much it. As you can see from what we've shown in this video so far, the Nvidia Shield still reigns supreme. If you can afford it, then get it. The only possible reason why I wouldn't suggest buying this is if you're not a fan of Android TV OS. The limited Play Store, of course, you can still download APKs from apps like ES File Explorer like you would on it. In fact, it's very similar to a Fire TV in terms of its limited access to certain apps. You can still do it. It's just a little bit harder than other devices that have a more complete Google Play Store. In terms of performance for streaming, as long as the content you're streaming is coming from a decent source, you will have absolutely no problems whatsoever getting it to run flawlessly on this. You're giving yourself the best possible option of streaming great content with one of these. This is where you guys come in. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the Nvidia Shield. Is it still, in your opinion, the best product on the market for streaming and gaming in one? Are there similar products out there, in your opinion, to the performance of this that are a lot cheaper? Of course, let me know what they are and why you like them. Have you got one of these? How have you found it? Have you been impressed? Kind of what you expect or disappointed? And as always, if you do have any questions, I will try my best to answer as many as I can. Like this video if you did enjoy it and found it helpful. Dislike the video if you didn't like it and didn't find it helpful, why would you? This was helpful, wasn't it? Subscribe and hit the little notification bell. If you're new to the channel, want to be notified every time I post a video on anything tech. I do a lot of unboxings, reviews, tutorials, etc. Pretty much daily content here on this channel. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.